He is a good God. <laughs> he is a faithful God. Who he is an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. <laughs> and thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for loving us. You are a good God. You are an awesome God. Spirit of God, the joy of hearing your word blesses our life. Amen. This morning we are ready to be taught. We are ready to learn. And we ask that you have your way. Amen. Reveal the word to us. Amen. And give us understanding. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. When we come into the presence of God, it is a time to just have fellowship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, and then with one another. And it is something for us to look forward to. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you have told somebody this morning that you are glad to see him or her in church. Richard, <clears throat> reach out to two or three people, tell them, I am glad to see you in church. I am glad. Every one of you, I am glad to see you in church. Praise the Lord. I am glad that you are in the house of God. This is the best house to be. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is the best house to be. And when you are here, anything is possible. Miracles are possible. Hope is possible. Healing is possible. Amen. Deliverance is possible. Amen. You will not miss your own. <laughs> you will not miss your own. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. A very special welcome to each and every one of you. To those in the micro churches. To those of you that are connected online, wherever you are listening to the word of the Lord this morning, this word will bring newness to you. Amen. Newness to you. Amen. In Jesus' precious mighty name. Amen. Today, we are going to look at designed for growth. Amen. Designed for growth. As we are in our enlargement campaign, as we are in our growth campaign, it is important for us to hear what we build up our faith for growth. Praise the Lord. So, designed for growth by the grace of God, in the next two, three weeks, we are going to deal with that. 
when you see a sports car, you know it is built for speed, isn't it? Yes, sir. When you see a truck, you know it is meant to carry load, isn't it? Yes, sir. When you see a bus, you know it is meant to carry what? Whether you go to school or not, you know it. When you are looking for transport, when you see a truck passing, you don't wave it down. Who told you not to wave it? Because you know from your knowing. Isn't it? And then when you, are, when you see a sports car passing by, you don't wave it down. Because you know it is not designed to carry passengers. But when you see the yellow bus, what do you do? Even if you don't stop, you abuse them. <laughs> Amen. Because you expected them to stop for you. Yes, Isn't it? Yes, and that is the way it is. When you see a Christian, we are designed for growth. Yes, Praise the Lord. Yes, Isaiah 9, 7. It is written, of the increase of his government and peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. That sounds to me like a continuous growth process. Amen? That sounds to me as, as ever-increasing growth. Amen? It's not whether you like it or not. It is about what the Lord has said. And when you read it completely, it says, Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from, the time, from that time forward, even forever. Amen? Amen. He says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He didn't say that your strength will perform it. He didn't say your qualification will perform it. He says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts. Meaning that, as a Christian, you are qualified for growth. It means, he said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. I will build my church. When the Lord said he will build, believe him he will build. And what do we have to do? We have to believe. We have to accept what God has said. Every believer, every Christian, you are meant to be progressive. You are created for advancement. It doesn't matter what country you are living in. Amen? It doesn't matter what village you come from. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what degree you hold. The best degree is the Christian degree. Amen? The best degree is the Christian degree of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. So we need to know that by nature, by design, no, we are not meant to be stagnant. There are certain things that when you know it changes your life. There are certain understanding that when you have, your life will never be the same again. And in this season of enlargement campaign, I say to you, refuse to be stagnant. Amen. Refuse to be stagnant. Amen. Refuse to accept the status quo. And I say to you, no nation has monopoly for prosperity. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It didn't say the good in America. 
He didn't say the good in Europe. He says the good in which land? Whatever land God has planted you. He said to Isaac, stay here. Don't go to Egypt. Even as I'm saying this now, as I'm saying this, if a man appears on the gate after service, distributing American visa, almost all of you will leave. True or false? That is a problem. That is a problem. And so even though you claim to be here and you are hearing this word, it's even, America is even too far. America is too far. Some of you will even go to any country at all. Praise the Lord. You say, let me go there and struggle. And so you create your future in that country. You are going to struggle. And so whatever that is in that country will prepare you for struggling. Amen. Amen. You can live well anywhere you are. There is only one instrument to create prosperity for a Christian. And that instrument is the word of God. And the devil will do anything possible to make sure that you do not have that instrument. Because poverty is of the devil. Oh yes, poverty is of the devil. You look at some of the nations surrounding Nigeria. They are so much into voodoo. And they have refused to develop. Even though some of them are supposed to be more developed than Nigeria. By reason of certain advantage. Do you understand? Idol worship takes you backwards. No matter what the devil promises, idol worship takes you backward. Go and check the villages that are given to idol worship. They don't develop. Go and look at the states that are given to idol worship. They don't develop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They refuse to develop. It doesn't matter how close they are to Lagos or how far they are from Lagos. Any city, any state, any nation, anybody given to idol worship, prosperity will elude you. Amen. Amen. And that is why we must be free from idol worship. We should make our lives free from idol worship. Do you know what idol worship means? Many of you don't understand. Idol worship means that God is not powerful enough for you. And so you went to look for extra. And when you do that, God will say, I will show you that that stone, that wood, that iron that you bow to, I created them. Including the one that fashioned them to an idol, I created him. And so, have nothing to do with idol worship. When you want to prosper, stay away from anything to do with idol worship. When you come from a place that is dedicated to idol worship, there are villages that are dedicated to idol worship. Amen. Amen. They have given themselves to idol worship. If you come from that place, listen to me. There is no emotion attachment to this thing. If you come from a place given to idol worship, leave that place and look for another village. If possible, don't go back there. Are you hearing me? When a place is dedicated to idol worship, when a place, a village, a certain location is dedicated to idol worship, have nothing to do in that place, in that land. You know why? You are on devil's property. You are what? On devil's property. And now you can say that you are a new creation. You go there and pray and pray and pray and pray. Remember, remember, level past level. When a place is given to the devil, the devil will quickly obtain C of O of that place. Certificate of occupancy. The devil will have take it and present it before God and say, you see, 
they have given this place to me and so i dictate what happens in this place why did god ask abraham or abraham to leave his country to leave his people have you thought about it the almighty god he said to abraham leave this place go to another place i will show you because that place was dedicated to idol worship and god wouldn't fight the devil over land when the people make a decision that they say they want to give their land to the devil god will leave it like that do you understand how these things work the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and god has given it to man if man will give it to the devil god will stay away you get it and that is why you don't go back there you don't go back there except the lord there are some cases remember when israel asked for a king that was not god's will isn't it samuel the prophet cried and cried and cried and what did god say god said to samuel why are you crying it's not you they rejected it is me i will give them a king and they will see what the king will do to them and so they got a king why they asked for it so when a place is dedicated to the devil the devil will not let anybody that call upon the name of jesus to prosper there except if you agree with him except you agree with him so when god said to abraham leave your country leave your people move because i have seen in abraham abraham does not like idol worship he doesn't want to be an idol worshiper but he lives in the midst of them and so if god is going to bless him is god if god is going to help him what did god say god said first i have to relocate you do you understand what i'm talking about but he is the almighty god he can do all things but god said leave and some of you you are living in a place where you should live did you hear what i said you are living in a place where you should live you shouldn't be there you shouldn't be there because god knows you can change to another place you can move to another place god knows that but it's your choice it's just like somebody that's dedicated to idol worship your mother or a mother gives birth and then carry the child to the native doctor and the native doctor said you have brought the child back to where the child came from and so they, they you know just like we do child dedication on the altar and the native doctor will dedicate that child to the devil you brought the child now the problem with this is that the child does not know what is going on newborn baby because the native doctor will say when you give birth bring the child back to the shrine are you hearing me and when you take the child back to that shrine the child does not know what is happening and then an incision will be made always always when child dedication to the devil is involved when human dedication to the devil is involved there will be an incision they must take blood it is true that you got born again it is true that you are saved but the foundation remains the foundation needs to be destroyed the foundation needs to be destroyed seriously speaking amen, amen. and so many christians they have gotten born again filled with the holy ghost filled with power pray in tongues do the right things pay their tithe but they don't move forward the way they ought to you know why a foundation needs to be revoked a foundation needs to be revoked so when we talk about we are designed for growth this is when we are in christ when we have given our life to christ even when we look give our life to, the bible said in the acts of the apostles as they got born again and gave their life to jesus they went and destroyed their magical books and all the things they were using for for witchcraft and all that they went and burnt it completely they didn't say well now i'm born again you know i'm a new creation no 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 no. the bible said they have to go and destroy and they confessed their deeds 
If you don't put the devil to shame, he will put you to shame. Praise the Lord. So, the word of the Lord is the primary agent for the growth of the Christian. Mark chapter 4 gives us ah, an idea of the process of growth. It gives us a way for growth. Mark chapter 4 verse 24. I am reading from the Amplified Version. Amplified Version. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said to them, Be careful what you are hearing. Amplified. Be careful what you are hearing. You know why? Faith comes by hearing. If you listen to the wrong things long enough, it will build up faith in you. If you listen to the right things long enough, it will build up faith. Romans chapter 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing. First, there, there is comma. Faith comes by hearing. Now, it means that whatever hearing that you hear, it has the capacity to build faith in you. Faith comes by hearing. If you keep hearing that Nigeria is bad, you will have faith for a bad nation. And then it says, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. So when you hear the word of God, it will build godly faith in you. God kind of faith in you. And so Jesus said, Mark 4, 24, and he said to them, amplified, be careful what you are hearing. He says, the measure, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. Praise the Lord. What is Jesus saying here? Jesus said that the way we are hearing the word of God, right? The way we are hearing the word of God, what Jesus is saying is that, Jesus is saying that the attention, the focus you give to the word of God if you will spend time to dwell and meditate upon the word, Jesus is saying, in the same way, the word you dwell upon and you meditate upon will deliver the same measure of virtue and knowledge into your life. Do you understand? I mean, the, 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 the Amplify makes it so clear. So, an investment you make in the word of God will make an investment in your life. But the devil will make sure that you don't make that investment. Now, you have no excuse for not studying the word of God. Even if you didn't go to school, you can hear the word of God online. They have Bible, audio Bible online. Amen? That your phone you carry to chat can also chat the word of God to you. You just have to go and download it. Audio Bible. And then you start from John chapter 1. I always recommend to people, if you don't know where to start to study the Bible, start from John chapter 1. Go to the end. It's a powerful book to change your life. I recommend it. I recommend it. The entire book of John. Read it. Start from there. It tells you all about Jesus. It tells you about creation. It tells you about walking in love. It tells you about faith. So, Jesus is saying that the quality of time we invest in his word will deliver quality results in our life. What happens if you don't deliver? What happens when you wake up in the morning, you carry your phone, you are making calls, you are chatting, that's how empty your life will be. A chatting life is an empty life. A meditating life is a full life. Praise the Lord. I have it as a tradition. My telephone does not come on until after 10 o'clock in the morning. My phone does not come on until after 10. And it's been like that for how many years? I can't remember. I set that rule in my life. The phone is mine. They, I'm not, I don't belong to the phone. Praise the Lord. And so, no matter the call, 
I don't think any of you are busier than me. Are you hearing me? I don't think that you are more busy than me. But you see, there is a discipline you can put in your life so that things will not possess you. You wake up in the morning, you are watching Nollywood. Are you serious? No, are you serious? Nollywood in the morning. And you will sit there, oh, you watch the evening till night and they close. And you don't know that you are their commodity now. DSTV has bought you. Praise the Lord. Or go TV or whatever TV is called. My own phone does not come on until after 10 in the morning. Except if there is an emergency I have to deal with. I can put it on, deal with that, and then after that, I will off it. It's a discipline. But you, your phone is on 24 by 7. For what? And you are not even employed. No, for what? And then when you come to church, your phone is still on. You only put it on silent mode. And then from time to time, you will still be checking it. And you wonder why you have so much trouble in your life. You wonder why you have so much trouble in your life. You have zero investment in the word of God. And so your life is rolling around zero. It doesn't work like that. If you are void of the word, your life will be empty. And all the devil wants to do is to make sure that you never spend time in the word. On my study desk, my, my Bible is always open. My Bible, at least one or two Bible, always open. So when I sit there, no matter what I'm looking, I will look into the Word. No matter what I'm looking, I will do what? Look into the Word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have Facebook. Right? That's what they call it, right? I have Face Bible. And it does wonder for me. I don't know what Facebook does for you, but Face Bible. Face Bible. Everybody say Face Bible. Face Bible. Lift up your Bible. Lift up your Bible. Say, I will face you. I will face you. Every, day. Every day. I will face you. I will face you. In Jesus' mighty name. The more time you spend in this, the longer your life will be. I love what Bishop Oedekwa said, our father in the Lord. He says, the amount of time you spend sitting down with this word will determine how far you will rise going up. And so Jesus says, be careful what you are hearing. Be careful what you are hearing. And then in verse 14, verse 20, Jesus told a story. First, he, he gave a parable of the sower. And then he spoke in parable when everybody was there. Then when everybody was gone, the disciples said, can you explain this parable to us? We don't understand it. We don't understand it. And Jesus tried to explain the parable of the sower. He started in verse 14, Mark chapter 4, verse 14. He said, the sower sows the word. Shout hallelujah. The sower sows the word. So this morning, what am I doing? What am I doing? The word is being sown this morning. Whether you are online, whether you are in the micro church, the word of God is being sown. But... It's not everybody that will get the same result. I wish everybody will have 100% result. I wish. God also desired that. But let's see. Let's see what will make some not to get the result. Amen? Amen. Verse 15. He says, The ones that are sown along the path or the pathway are those who have the word sown in their hearts. You have the word. You receive it in your heart this morning. But when they hear, 
Satan comes at once and by force take away the message which is sown in them. So you are hearing the word as you are hearing it now. And you are receiving it. You are even excited. You will even say thank you Lord. You will even shout. But the Bible says after you have heard it Satan will come by force and take it. You know why? It goes back to the foundation. It goes back what gives the devil inroad into your life. And so you, you receive the word but the enemy will come in and take out what you have received. That is one set of hearers. And what do you need to do? You need to close that door that is open in your life. He says Satan comes in by force, takes away the message. It's not that you willingly lost it. There is a crack that gives the devil an advantage to come and steal the word. The word that's supposed to bless you. The word that's supposed to heal you. You receive it. You are excited. You want to walk with it. You want to live by it as you receive it. But there was an opening. Remember, it's Jesus that's teaching us this. The fact that he says, you hear the word, you receive the word in your heart, means that he's talking about a Christian. Is it not? It wouldn't be about an unbeliever. So Jesus even acknowledging that even among those that are saved, you have an opening in your life that gives the devil room to come and steal the word of faith that is supposed to build you up. And you don't do anything about it. You think it's normal. My friends, it's not normal. Because the more the devil can steal the word from you, the more he leaves you in stagnation. It is the word of God that enters into your heart that is able to change your life. But if it enters and it is stolen, if it enters and it is stolen, it will never build you. It will never change you. So what is the cure? Prayer is not the cure. No, prayer is not. You need help. Make an appointment to see your pastor. Discuss the situation. Amen. And there is always a solution for a believer. There is always a, there is no hopelessness for a believer. No. Do you remember the description I gave about poverty? What poverty is? Do you remember? Okay, look at me. Continue looking. I'm, I'm, see, I'm not doing Hollywood here. What did I say to you if poverty is? Sorry? No, no, no. I said, what is, what is poverty? Uh -huh. You are looking at me. So, in the whole assembly, nobody remembers. Did I say something about hopelessness and helplessness? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, let's, let's continue. Oh, you want me to say it again? Me. Me, say it again. No, don't worry. Since we are talking about prosperity, I will say it over dinner. If you want to invite me for dinner, I will say it. Praise the Lord. If you want to invite me for dinner, just then um, I will say it there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Nobody is taking the offer. Verse 16. And in this. <laughs> he said, Pastor, you won't eat where I eat. It depends. And in the same way, the ones sown upon stony ground are those who, when they hear the word, at once receive and accept. And welcome it with joy. Is that somebody here? But verse 17 says, And they have no real root in themselves, and so they endure for a little while. They, this group received the word well. Oh. Everything went well. They came to church. They were excited. They were sharing their testimonies. Everything was good. That's what the Bible says. When they had the word at once, receive 
and accept and welcome it with joy. That should be wonderful for everybody. And they have no real root in themselves. And so they endure for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word. When trouble or persecution arises on account of the word. They immediately are offended. Because, sorry, become displeased, indignant resentful and they stumble and they fall away jesus is acknowledging that the word of the lord will offend many yes and this is something that christianity have not come to accept christians have not come to accept the fact that the word of god will offend you will make you sad you know why light cannot shine in darkness and darkness will be happy you don't get it you don't get it you don't get it. Jesus is acknowledging that the word of God will make you angry. That the word of God will bring persecution. It will bring rebuke in your life. You know, you are used to living the way you want. And now you come to church. You got born again. You behave the same way. And you are rebuked and corrected. And you got offended and you got angry. What do you think that church is? Church is a spiritual hospital. Church is a spiritual hospital. And the problem with this is this. As long as it offends you, it makes you angry, and then you leave and you, you abandon it. You leave church A to go to church B, you go to church C and all that. Let me tell you, the word of the Lord is the same through all the churches if you go to a living one. There is no church designed for you. Every church is designed for God. And he's the head of his church. You may not like what I'm telling you. It says they become displeased. They become indignant. They become resentful. And they stumble and they fall away. Sometimes we go after them to try and recover them. Sometimes we try to plead with them. You are not supposed to be angry. And they say, Pastor, what you said is what is making me angry. If you didn't say it, you know, ah, ah. One time I was ministering like this. And the Lord said to me, as I was ministering, I stopped. The Holy Ghost stopped me and I said, everybody doing drug business, if you don't change, you will end up in jail before the end of this year. I said that I continue to minister. I don't know why I said it. I don't know why I should say it in the middle of the service. And lo and behold, next Sunday, there was a conspiracy. Many people pulled out of the church. I said, what is going on? I didn't even know that many of them were doing drug business. I didn't know. And I went to see who I considered to be uh, a responsible person among them. When, you know, I went to see him. When, we went, when I went to his side, he said, Pastor, that thing you said, ah, it made them angry. I said, which one? Because I said many things. Which one? He said, that thing you said about pudding drug. Ah, Pastor, he made a lot of them angry. I said, oh, is that, is, that, is that actually the issue? He said, yes. He said, that's why they are not in church. He said, Pastor, I can get them together and you can come and apologize to them. And they will come back. <laughs> I looked at him. I looked at him. I said, you know what? Let them stay where they are. Let them stay where they are. Two months later, the prophecy came to pass. They were putting them in prison one by one. Many of them ran out of the city. The word came to save them, but they became resentful. They fall away. They say, I should come and apologize. Me, apologize to you about the word of God. It offended you. Me, apologize. For what now? If I apologize to you, what will I do to God? So I will go to God and say, Lord, you know, these people, allow them to do drug now. Why is your law so difficult, Lord? Relax a little bit, Papa. And besides, they want to leave church. Have you had such a thing? God bending to you. 
The rebuke is for you to leave. They ended up in jail. Quite a number of them went to jail. Some of them ran out of the city. Yes, it affected the church, but I would rather pastor 20 people that know God than to pastor 200 people that are not serious with God. Do you know the work of passion people that are not serious with God? Pastor, I need to see you. Pastor, pray for this. Pastor, pray for that. Pastor, do this. Pastor, they will weary you out. Do you understand? They think that pastor is called for them. When you get born again, my job is to train you, to build you, so that you can also be an extension of pastor. So that you can be a minister, you can be a disciple, you too can convert others. We were in Agege yesterday. We were in Agege on Friday. And I ministered the word. And everyone that was there ministered to the people also. Praise the Lord. That is the partnership that works with God. To be a pastor is not a one-man show. And so, the, the vision or the purpose of the pastor is to build and raise as many people as possible so that if I'm not here today, somebody else can do the same job better than me. Are you hearing me? You had our devotional. What will you give for the next generation? Are you thinking about that? What will you bequeath to the next generation? Pastor Benny Hinn was sharing something. I, I was listening to him. He said, you should be afraid of artificial intelligence. Don't you know, if we don't take time, you will gather like this, there will be no human, there will be a robot sh sharing the word of God. You don't know it. Let me ask you, how many of you are raising pastors in your children? No. How many of you are raising, you say, my child must be a pastor, must be an evangelist, must be an apostle. You make it your purpose. That is a gift to the next generation. That is the only gift you can give to the next generation. He said, you will be an engineer, but first you must be a pastor. You may be a pilot, but first you must be a pastor. You may be an architect, but first you must be a pastor. Why? Because I am giving you as a gift to the next generation. So that you'll be able to preach the undiluted word of God. Pastor Benny Hinn said that sadly, pastors are taking messages prepared by AI, artificial intelligence, and then they share it with their brethren because they don't have time to study. I so a pastor is reading something that robot prepared for him on computer, printed out, and he brings it and he's reading it. No, do you get the reality of the story? Do you get the reality? You want to burn a doctor, you want to burn an engineer, you want to tell me who will raise pastors. No, my son will not be a pastor. Have you seen the way pastors pray and fast? Why? Because of you, that's why we pray and fast for so long. If we don't make the job of a pastor attractive, nobody will be in this job. Oh. When you don't listen, when we say look after pastor, take care of pastor, it's not just for him, it is to make this job attractive. Do you get it? If you don't put uh, 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 governors fly on private jets. And they have chain of escort. Local government chairman, just little people. Little people living by your street. They drive special cars with big escort and all that. And it makes the office attractive. Are you hearing me? It makes that attract it makes the office what? Attractive. Pastor finishes and pastor is believing God for refreshment. To have a car, pastor have to pray. Pray and pray and pray. To dress well, he has to pray. And if he wears, if he wears what, he comes, what he has to come and minister, he says, look at where pastor is looking today. Hey, poverty has come upon a man of God. How did he come? It comes by your neglect. Are you hearing him? 
They employ you in the bank. They make provision for your addressing. True or false? They employ you in the insurance company. They make provision for your addressing. True or false? In church, they employ you. They leave you. No. If we don't make this job attractive, there will be nobody doing it in the next 30 years, 40 years, God forbid. I'm telling you the gospel truth. When we talk about prosperity in the house of God, it's not just for your pocket. It is to keep the ministry going. You come to a place, you say, Pastor, I brought a car for you. It's outside. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and Pastor is excited. Do you know the kind of prayer he will pray for you? No, you think he'll be praying. That prayer is for something else. When he is in that car, ah, do you know the prayer? No, do you know the prayer? There are levels of prayer. And sometimes it takes certain things to provoke certain prayers. You don't know it. You don't know it. It takes certain things. How many of you have heard about the man Wiki? Wiki. Who is he? Who is he? Sorry? Former governor of River State. Okay. What is he now? FCT minister. Is that an easy job? Is that an easy post? How did he get there? No, how did Wike get there? He, he is in PDP, right? Right? But he delivered his state to APC. Crazy. But he did it. The man said, Nigeria needs a madman to govern. He said he is the person. So he admits that he's a bit mad. And I agree with him to some extent. And so, in return, Tinibu did not neglect him. Tinibu made him the FCTA. Abuja, he made him the minister of Abuja, where money pours in. Money pours in like water in Abuja, for the development of Abuja. Are you hearing me? He delivered his state against his own party to the other party. Call it treason, but he delivered no, do you get it? And we are doing evangelism. Go in the same way. Deliver 100 souls. Deliver 50 souls. Whether you have money or not, use your mouth and talk souls into the kingdom of God. And see what God will make you. A minister of transformation. Am I communicating somebody? You may not be able to buy a pastor a car. You may not be able to build a church. But you say, Lord, let my souls be able to do it. And so the souls you bring will do what you cannot do. It is the same way I pray, Lord, let my children go further than me in ministry. Let them do better than me in ministry. Let them rise higher than me in ministry. You know what? I would like to have the joy to sit back and hear you minister the word of God undiluted more than me. And I'm there sitting there making it. I say, Lord, thank you that I'm seeing it come to pass. That is the satisfaction of every father. No father likes to nurse their children till they are 70 and he is 85. No father. And so our God is much more bigger than us. God wants us to take our place as sons and God, sons and daughters of the most high God. He wants us to be in command and control of what happens on earth. You know, God does not want his children to be beggars, victims. What will he do with all the power he has? disobedience lawlessness makes God looks like a poor man are you hearing me makes God looks like a poor man and yet the Bible said the silver and gold belongs to me God said hey the silver and gold are mine he said in a short while I will do a shaking when I shake when I shake things will begin to fall for you because I am Jehovah I am able to shake nations for your sake but you know what you are going after nations God said come after me you are running to nations. You want to go to Europe. You want to go to America. You want to move to Lekki. You want to live in Ikoyi. Live in Zion first. 
Live in Zion. Live in Zion. Operate in Zion. The Bible said because they have no real root in themselves. Even though they receive the word of God well. You know what happened? They got offended. They got angry. They got bitter. Praise the Lord. And then there's still one more. Verse 18. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. Every one of them hears the word. Every one of them receives the word. Praise the Lord. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. Then, verse 19, amplified. Classic amplified version. Then, he says, the cares of this world. Ah, Ah, the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. What a terrible state. What a terrible state. You are in the world. And so you have become like the world, even though you are born again. You are always with the world. You are never in the world. Can you imagine what the word of God talks about? Oh, it says, listen. Let me repeat again. Verse 19. Then the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age. Social media is a distraction of the age. Are you hearing me? Social media is a great distraction of the age. And the pleasure and the light and false glamour. What is false glamour? Fashion. Fashion. The Bible defines it as false glamour. And deceitfulness of riches. And the craving and passionate desire for other things, it creep in and choke and suffocate the word. And it made the word powerless in your life. Do you hear it? So you can see that the word of God is designed to change you. But you can easily make it of no effect. The word of God is designed to build you up. But you can make it of no effect. Praise the Lord. And then in verse 20 he says, And those that are sown in good, well-adapted soil are the ones who hear the word and receive and accept and welcome it and bear fruit. Shout hallelujah. And some 30 times as much as was sown, some 60 times as much as some even a 100 times as much. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What do you see? You see that the kingdom of God is linked with sowing, with sowing, with sowing. What is the social media trying to do now to stop Christians from sowing? From sowing. You can make a perfect argument that Titan is in the Old Testament. The question is not whether Titan is Old Testament. The question is what is your motive? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you say that Titan is Old Testament, we agree. But then, let's go to the New Testament. Amen. If you make argument that Titan is Old Testament, which is 10%, I agree with you. Even though that I will show you scriptures in the New Testament where even Jesus said, pay your tithe. Amen. Amen. But let's go to the New Testament from the Acts of the Apostles. It wasn't 10% they were given. Amen. Amen. They were given their houses. They were given their land. They were given... Think about it in Acts chapter 5. Why did Ananias and Sapphira die? Did they give 10%? No, why did they die? 
They gave more than 10%. Very much more than 10%. And they kept back the rest for themselves. And that was enough for them to die. Look. So if you argue that tithing is Old Testament, yes, it is. Because of your level of immaturity, we agree. Praise the Lord. Supposing, listen, supposing there is no titan in the word of God completely. Let's say there is no titan in the word of God. What will you do? And so you will let the church die. Just because there is nowhere written that you should give. No, think about it. Let's assume, let's assume that there is no titan in the whole Bible even. And God didn't say give in the whole Bible. Let's say so. Are you hearing me? Let's come to the level of thinking of humans. And then, what will happen to the church? No. You like this pulpit, right? It wasn't prayer that did it. Those of you that were here. Is it not true? What did it? Money. Money did it, isn't it? We are using generator. And then the message, we are on transmission now. Anybody can connect to us anywhere in the world. Right? What do you think that did it? Fasting. Money, right? We have computers we are using for this transmission outside the internet. And as I'm talking to you, we need two more computers, big ones, because sometimes one, we have an issue. Now, what is it that brings it in? Prayer and fasting. You can pray to God, but God has to speak to somebody to make it happen. And if you don't like giving, how can God speak to you? God can only speak to those whose hearts are after his kingdom. Think about it. Think about it. He sent Jesus. Jesus died for our sins and all that. And now we are saved. We are born again. We can claim healing. We can claim deliverance. We can claim all the graces of God. We can claim it. So if there is no giving, what will connect you to God's blessings? When God already said in Genesis, he said, seed time and harvest shall not cease. How many of you pay electric bills in your house? You pay electric bills in your house. Quite a number of you. Praise the Lord. The church also pays. We pay electric bill. And our own is heavy. Amen. Amen. And so, what is the motive of those arguing that you should not give in church? And some of you will really say, now you are talking. You are enjoying AC, even as we are here. And you read such a thing and say, hey, 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 this man is talking true. No, do you get it? Do you see the stupidity of the argument of not giving to God? How will the church grow? How will the church be sustained? Ask yourself. Many of you wouldn't like to go to church under the tree. And the pastor will be on top of the tree. You sit down and he'll be preaching. <laughs> Would you like that? Please, think again. And repent. And change your mind. God is looking out for those that look out for his kingdom. God is always looking out for such people. And may the Lord look out for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are designed for growth. But there are principles that you need to handle for you to grow. If you want to design sports car, you need to deal with aerodynamics. The same thing with plane. You have to deal with gravity. There are laws that if you don't follow, it will never work. In the same way, for you to grow as a Christian, there are laws. There are laws. There are laws to help you. I stand as a testimony, as a witness that God never forsakes those 
that will cleave unto him. Left for man, I will be a beggar. Including my own family. But I chose God. I made that choice as a small boy. I chose God. And since then, he has never forsaken me. Do you understand? You come to a place, your parents are gone. Uncles are gone. Everybody is gone. And it is you and God. What will you be, a criminal? That's what the devil will offer you. And then you will excuse it, I had nobody. That's not a reason for you to be a crook. Are you hearing me? Yes, That's not a reason. Even if there's nobody, there's somebody. And his name is Jesus. Stop justifying why you are lawless. All of us could be lawless. Me too, I had no parents. No, I had no parents. But that is not an excuse to be a failure. Do you understand me this morning? I have no parents, but I had God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you. Many of you, uh, you know, I don't have mother, I don't have... So what? So what? It may even be better that they were gone. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Somebody made a joke and said the best man to marry is the one without mother. Hello? Have you seen trouble mother-in-law's cause? No. I don't agree with them, but in a way I see sense. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because to marry mommy's boy is difficult. It's a problem. Ah! It's a problem. They don't agree. Let's not go there. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Do you still love your pastor? Me, I love you. <laughs> but I have to tell you the truth. <laughs> because I don't want you to be poor. I have to tell you the truth. I want you to be made. Amen. 